Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome back briefly to the sandbox mode, where we're going to be taking a look at the new craft I'm going to be trying to spawn into the campaign today as we continue to wipe out the Deepwater Guard. Now, in the previous video, I did make a bit of a promise. I was going to show a lot more building on camera to showcase exactly what I'm doing with the different crafts. Well, this week has been a bit of a bad week, and one of the nights ago, I may have found a bottle of tequila, which I had for Christmas, and now we have a submarine. So, we now have the Frenzy. So, this is what we're going to be spawning in. I am going to do a very quick combat showcase in a second, not actually with its weapons, but just with how it works. And the idea is, this is a 98,000 resource craft, so essentially just over double of the Envoy. It has tiny little torpedoes on the side, it has tiny little missiles on top, but its main weapon is, of course, the advanced cannon sticking out of its mouth, as all good creatures do. This is a 230 RPM 250 millimeter advanced cannon. Now, I have done something very stupid with this, but I'm going to stick with it because I didn't realize I was doing something stupid until afterwards, and I like how it works. So, if you're firing a weapon underwater, what you really need to do, at least in most cases, is add this here, the super cavernation base. Let's just quickly put down a head. There we are. And then the super cavernation base. And there's a problem here if you're using explosive, which I didn't realize until long after I'd finished the craft. As usual, the music was probably a bit too loud there, so I fixed that. And this is what I was talking about. The super cavernation bases reduce the damage of explosive, fragments, and EMP down to 75%, essentially removing 25% of the damage. And naturally, I've gone with pure high explosive rounds because they're my favourite. I know there's so many other choices, but I like explosions. And currently, I need something cathartic and explosions are that option. So we're sticking with that. But maybe in the future, I will swap them out for something a little bit more effective. But yeah, with this, it also reduces 90% of the slowdown incurred by water, meaning you can fire through water from water into the air or from air into the water with minimal problems. It also stops it from skimming, so yeah, you can fire into the water as well. It just means the sub can actually fire at things above the water. Now what I'm going to very quickly do is just throw down a godly enemy just to showcase how this thing actually functions. I won't be using the weapons though, because I really want to see them in action for the first time altogether in the campaign itself. I literally just finished this design and did nothing else after I'd completed it. So here's the Kraken. The Kraken's firing away, I don't think he can really see us properly, so yeah, it's timing everything wrong. But then, here's where things are interesting. First of all, we can see above the water because of these little things we fire from the back. These are essentially radars that we fire from this tiny little missile system, and then we have these things. These are distraction sticks. It's one of the easiest ways to protect from torpedoes, and one of the funniest in my opinion. So these are very large, very expensive torpedoes, and... They're trying to go for the sticks rather than the craft, resulting in that happening. In all the tests I've done, not a single torpedo has hit the craft. And I have tested out many, many different enemies. I think the only one enemy which came close was just a swarm of little torpedoes which managed to bounce these right next to the um, submarine itself. So that is pretty much that. It'll sit at about 1,000 meters away from the target and then it'll just pepper them with shots. A little spoiler, I guess. But now into the campaign, let's see if we can spawn this thing in today. Now that we're back though, the first thing I really need to do is a bit of a transport vessel just to get the resources from here over to pretty much everywhere else. Now this doesn't need to be too big, I'm probably just going to build it out of wood because I like building with wood. Uh, so let's just put down a quick rectangle for size. Sure, something like this. Just really simple hull. Try and make it a bit more streamlined, obviously. Put a basic engine here, nice and efficient, and then that will be our travel. In fact, I may use an RPG, an RPG, an RTG. <laughs> well, it'd be a very weird form of transport, but there we are. An RTG or something, that way we're not actually using fuel or anything when we're moving around. Otherwise, we may as well just go with the refineries and move them like that, using the commodities. Or I could have a transport network like I've done before, essentially having transport pylons, so this feeds into the next pylon, the pylon feeds again, and then that constantly funnels fuel and resources around. Nope, I want to build a boat. Really, really basic here, so I'm probably skipping a lot of this, so I've built this type of hull a million times over. Well, I've cut it down to size significantly because, yeah, this thing is never going to be in combat. Honestly, there's no reason I even really need to build it like this. I could just 
well, I could cheese it a lot easier, but I just fancied building a boat. Okay, a bit silly about the enemy here, but whilst I'm just finishing off the boat, it's almost done now, I'm being attacked by a Shrike on its own. Uh, the Shrike is a bomber, if I'm correct, right? It drops bombs on things? Can't imagine that's actually going to be particularly good versus the Envoy. We do also have regular anti-air. So regular anti-air, we also have the missiles, which are incoming now. Only one hit, but that was enough to, uh, yep, there goes the strike. And that was pretty much that. Oh yeah, the envoy can't really see things underwater, so I'm glad that just died by itself. So thank you for the resources. So this is what we've got so far, we're almost finished with it, don't worry I won't be um, boring everyone with the details of this craft since we're probably never going to see it again. But I feel like this could be a proper vanity project, if you spent uh, an hour or two just doing all the decorations and stuff I bet you can make an amazing looking cargo vessel. To be fair, not really a traditional cargo looking craft, but now I think about it, isn't there like a cargo hull? Yeah, you can actually just get the cargo hull template. Oh yeah, that would be good, having those little uh, bits on the side. Oh well, we're sticking with the weirdness I've built. Now that was a serious speed build. Okay, it goes about 25 meters per second at maximum. It'll take absolutely no resources since it's completely RP RTG based. Got grenades on the mind apparently. Okay, so I'm just going to sit that back there, going to grab all the resources and then transport it over here so we can start making our sub as soon as possible. I'm going to allow the envoys to just continue to move forwards and take more and more territory. Ooh, a Corsair. What's a Corsair again? Is that the small one with the uh, missiles? No, it's quite cheap actually. Um, in that case, envoy, meet the Corsair. Hello, we have the Rapier. You see, the Rapier... No, the Corsair is what I thought the Rapier was. So what is the Rapier, then? Very similar. Okay, I can see why I got them mixed up. This is the more expensive one. Yeah, 63k. That actually outclasses the Envoy by almost 20,000. Lots of missiles. That's what the difference is. This one is just missile hell. Okay, we took out its own missile launcher, which is good because we are... Actually, we're very good against light fire like that, but... That's a lot of light fire. Ow. Those little advanced cannons are so useless. Oh, I say that, but then it just won us the, the match before we took any more damage. Never mind, they're alright if they hit the right spot. Far too reliant though currently on just the um, the kinetic missiles. I also fixed the speed of this one because once again I'll manage to mess it up. Okay, everything is going well. Oh, that's more than one thing. A Shrike, a Corsair, and a Flying Squirrel. Walk into a bar. Okay, we're going to be fighting the Flying Squirrel and the Shrike at the same time. There's nothing we really could have done about that. The Flying Squirrel really wants to get right up against us, which isn't exactly very good. Now the problem is the Corsair likes to fire at larger targets, and I don't want that, so straight away... We should be okay against the Flying Squirrel. We do have the anti-air weapons. And it only takes a couple of shots to destabilize it. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Yeah, that's just the anti-aircraft weapons. Ah, oh, Shrike managing to dodge our kinetic missiles there because it was being a little bit destabilized. Oh, those are magneton, don't they? Don't actually manage to bomb our flyer, please. Thank you. You know, I really do like the Envoy. It's for such a cheap little thing. I do really, really like it. Can these please actually hit? They're not the most agile missiles. Yeah, so although they do have prediction guidance, this might take a while. It's going to be just a matter of doing little bits of damage to it until it eventually falls out the sky. The squirrel is explosive.
Well, once again, we have a shrunk shrike. A sunk shrike. Getting a little bit of deja vu here. Once again, we are fighting a Corsair. I swear sometimes the kinetic missiles just forget what they're aiming at. Look at him jiggle. Okay, all is forgiven. It's against small targets they really struggle, because in tests, they seem to never miss even fast-moving large targets. It could be our detection just isn't good enough, since they are going off remote guidance, which is using the detection rather than their own detection. Yeah, it could just be that's a bit messed up, which is very possible. But still, when they do hit, that's pretty much game over now. The Corsair is pretty much done here. Tempted to capture it, honestly, it is. I think it can't fight back. Oh, but it's dead now. As soon as we start fighting things like the Onyx Watch, just any group more difficult than Deepwater Guard, the envoys are just going to be nothing. Absolutely nothing. Gotta be honest, the second I have the first Frenzy, which will be any moment now, I am tempted to attack the Onyx Watch. I don't think the Frenzy would do fantastically against them. But look at that resource zone right there. It's so close to us. It wouldn't take any time for the Frenzy just to rush up there and just destroy it. And it is a sub, so any enemies which aren't particularly good versus submarines, it's going to have a huge advantage against, which is quite a lot of designs. Moving out, moving out. Okay, Envoy, move over there. Moving out. Okay, you already captured that, so I'm just slowly capturing everything in my way. Our very first frenzy has been spawned into the game. Lovely. Just need to give it enough material so it can go out by itself, and yeah, I think I will be attacking the Onyx Watch, because that's just going to be way more fun, and a bit more difficult on myself, so attacking two enemies at the same time for a bit more enjoyment. This is such a weird craft. As per usual with the Shrike, it's in a death spiral. Making it very difficult for my missiles to hit. Detection is near perfect, by the way. I double-checked. It's been a list for a while, so I'm just going to skip ahead. There we are, just defeated with the anti-air. Yep, yeah, those missiles are definitely just not very good against very quick opponents. Moving out, moving out. If they hit, they're fantastic, but yeah, obviously not designed for it. Destroy this. Okay. Armor being weakened by the advanced cannons, and then... Crushed. Ooh, is it offline? Are all the, we are all the weapons offline? Okay, stop. I'm gonna capture it. Oh no, it's actually AI dead! Okay, didn't have a chance. Must have hit right where its AI was. So we meet again, River Rat. River Rat. Well, look at you! You've gonna made yourself almost into a man. Got a bit of scruff on your chin now, you do. See, that always makes me laugh, because right now my beard is down to my chest. I know what you're thinking, thinking that here's your chance to get revenge for what I did to your parents and for taking that ship. Well, life's just tough now, ain't it? Besides, you don't stand a chance against me. I've learned so much from those shiny technologies on that old boat that I've applied them to my own prowler. Yeah, we get it. At some point, we'll have to fight Sal. Oh, there's Sal. Oh, yeah, we need to fight Sal. Um, are you going to move or stay there? Oh, maybe we should send our sub... Oh, actually, our sub will really struggle here. Really, really shallow water. Thankfully, its AI does mean it won't just hit the floor, but it's not really going to get much value here. Um... Oh, you're moving. Okay, move back, move back, move back. Let's get a couple more... Moving out. You know what, envoys? Let's get you all together. Moving out. Let's, have an en Let's just have an envoy battle. Envoys versus the Prowler. Almost 100,000 for the Prowler. I'd love to capture it. Still going to attack the Onyx Watch, though. As you can see, I'm now capturing the square next to the Onyx Watch's territory. Then I am going to make my move against them. Thankfully, it turns out the Prowler and such are not particularly quick. So we have a lot of time. We can definitely build up at least one more of the Envoy. I'm now realising I want more craft than the Envoy and the Frenzies. Yeah, this whole area is just terrible for the Frenzy. Far too restrictive. It wouldn't hurt itself. Its AI isn't that dumb. 
but it really doesn't want to be here. Gonna grab some more resources, come back, and then we're gonna have four envoys versus the Captain Sal's fleet. They're going to massively outdo us in terms of materials, but as we've proven, the envoys, at least against the first faction, do incredibly well. Resistant to light arms fire, weapons which tend to tear apart, wood and very light metal, they're okay, they're certainly okay. They're gonna be near useless versus anything here. Uh, except for maybe things like this, just the spear, just chilling here. Look how tiny it is, little tiny Onyx watch boat. Well, they've ended up just moving back to the resource zone. Uh, looks like they're collecting the salvage or something, or just moving resources around, not too sure. Well, the new envoy's just been created, but uh, we don't have any... ...resources on it, so I'll wait until I have some resources, and then, yeah, still going with the whole four envoys versus this. Hopefully it'll just stay put now. Oh, no, no, it looks like it's turning back around against us. <laughs> don't really know what it's trying to do, honestly. Oh, hello. There's a rape here, and that's going to start taking my territory, though. Um, this is more important. Take this, then we can take it all back. It doesn't really matter too much. I just couldn't help it. It's just such a perfect opportunity. Now, we're very far away at the moment. So I Okay, so it definitely has torps, and I completely forgot it also has munition systems. Might turn off my missiles, then. That's a waste of resource. No, I feel that's a bit cheaty, completely changing things like that after a fight started. Well, I mean, to be fair, we're being cheesy anyway, so I feel like going any further than that is just being mean. Yeah, so our missiles are basically useless, and the torps should still be okay. Not that they're going to do much damage, and the shells should be fine since they're underwater. Okay, there's the enemy torps. Hopefully they'll see the, d the um, distraction sticks. Which they have. Well, so we're missing most of our shells right now. Either way, lovely. Now these shells, I have to say, are not very good at all. They were designed purely to fight Deepwater Guard for fun, nothing else. They are at 75% damage because of the Super Cavernation base. They are not very good versus stacked armor at all. But they are slowly, slowly carving away as we can see. <laughs> Torps is missing. Oh, it's kind of awful. Face the frenzy of the Lathrixian Legion. Remember, we are less than three times the cost of this thing. And by that I meant to say three times less. <laughs> well, we are obviously less than three times the cost. Here's what I'm hoping, that we just core it out a little bit. Maybe we can make it sink. Now we're doing okay, and because the torps are frag, they are also doing something. Haven't seen a single missile hit. No, look, the missiles are being destroyed as soon as they leave the water. Though, if we destroy its engines, that will stop. Oh, you six percent health. Oh, it's gonna take ages. Let's keep on going. I believe in you. This is so cheesy. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Oh, its engines have turned off. It's no longer able to move. It looks like it's not supporting itself either. Yeah, if we keep this up, it's going to sink. It's a big block of metal. Let's make it sink. It really does look like an angry fish, doesn't it? I'm, I am swimming over just in case we take out the AI. I would like to capture... Oh my god, it's completely capsized. Oops. And I was hit by something. I think I was just hit by the frenzy. Uh, seems like... Oh, there's my corpse. Seems like it wasn't needed anyway. The enemy is now low health. It has just been shredded apart, especially once we got inside. Um, yeah, it's just dead. That was it. The frenzy took no damage at all. It was a perfect counter match. That wasn't about building skill. That wasn't about me being good. It wasn't about the craft being good. It's about making a weird skull and crossbones. But mostly, it was just about sheer countering. So, and this is why normally I avoid subs and spacecraft, because sometimes fights just go like that. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do, if it lets me go back to map, which for some reason it isn't, um, game. We're not in adventure mode, but it's treating me like I'm in adventure mode. Like, yeah, it won't let me go to the map screen at all. Had to reload the game completely, but yeah, we're back. Wow, no salvage all. Oh, that 1% is terrible. Since we're on hardest difficulty. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is actually bring you back. 
That's how we declared war. Probably breaking a lot of pacts there. Oh, looks like, looks like Sal's fleet are finally moving close to us, so let's attack them with our envoys. All got resources. Yep, cool, cool, cool. And so the final battle of the day begins. The four envoys versus Sal and his cronies. So honestly speaking, I don't know even who to target here first. I'm going to let the envoys do their thing. I'm actually... This sounds weird. I'm a little bit scared of the Kalmar. Normally, I'm not. The Kalmar normally poses mild to no threat. It's one of those designs that's quite niche. I think this is the time for it to shine. The envoys have one major weakness. Actually, they have several. They're very cheap and very flimsy. But... It's very easy to knock them out of the sky. They have only one major thruster section, which isn't particularly well armoured, and their engines are pitiful. They're very cheap and very small engines. They have just about enough to keep them in the air. The whole point was, they're cheap. They cost almost nothing to run. Give them any extra stress, and they're going to sink. Now, thankfully, they can still fight and float just fine in the water, but obviously, being in the water means they're just a sitting duck for all the other enemies, and the Kalmar uses harpoons. It's going to try and drag them down. Don't care too much about you. You have bombs, I believe. Uh, I think you do? Yeah, they're all hidden there. Okay. So it's all the spin blocks. Oh, this opens up. Okay. That's not really a big threat against an airship unless they get the most perfect bombing run. So only mildly scared of you plus our anti-aircraft weapon should go against you. You're going to do continuous damage and be very annoying. I don't know what to say about Sal's ship. Lots of cram cannons. If they get a lucky hit, we're probably going to die. So... I want you to fire everyone, as long as you don't focus on this one first. That's all, really. Okay, the anti-aircraft weapon is all going after the enemy aircraft, as you'd imagine. Oh, so many hits at once, actually just shredding the wings. The missiles are going towards the Corsair. Okay, not what I expected, honestly. I guess um, the amount of weapons it has and the speed it was going probably made it a more happy target. The target prioritization on these things is pretty much um, neutral. It's the default, really. No! <laughs> My sail! Oh, you may also notice one of them's flying really low. The reason for this, I didn't have time to test out the collision avoidance on all of the different craft, so I just set them to different altitudes. It's lazy, but I just don't have time tonight. I'm... This close to finishing recording because it is now 3 a.m. Okay, now they're firing on the Kalmar. Oh, those kinetic missiles are just brutal. Absolutely brutal. Oh. Oh, very lucky. Very, very lucky indeed. They just didn't hit her. Oh, did it bounce? They are being hit a little bit by the smaller missiles, but incoming kinetic! That did far less than expected. Ooh, you lost something. Can you please take it down before we can do another volley? That would be wonderful. I was missing of every single one of those missiles. Oh, did not miss there, though. Did not miss there. That's one of our engines. Yep, one of the engines is gone. One envoy is sinking. Look, I'm circling it. What piranhas? Do piranhas circle things? Don't know. I meant to say vultures. <laughs> That's why I was confused. Oh, stop hitting! Ow. Oh, his spleen. Um, how are you still going? Man, must got a few lucky hits. Like, the, the missiles now are just scratching it. Yeah, that's why these missiles do not shine. They're just not big enough or fast enough to deal with much armor. I mean, that's pretty much all the designs so far. I really should just make one large ship. That is really the easier way to win, especially in the early game. Oh no, you've been downed as well. How? Why are you too close before the thrusters turned on? Nowhere near fast enough. There we go, though. Sal is defeated. I mean, it was a pretty good showing of the weaknesses and strengths of the envoys. Um, against small targets like the Kalmar against the Corsair, absolutely great. Those missiles just do so much collateral. It's just, 
destroys them. Against even things like Sal Ship, though, the Prowler, it's just not particularly great. Okay, can you all please repair up? You all have at least one repair bot. Move forward. You should have enough fuel and stuff left. Yes, you do. Should we share that a bit better? And move on to take out the Sinners out. Wait, didn't I? Yeah, let's just uh, move there, secure that. Then we have another resource zone. Oh, but saying that, there's the Rapier over there. So, we're going to break one of you away from the fleet. Moving out. Go and get some reinforcements, some um, moving out, moving out. materials, then go and attack the Rapier. You're coming back to repair, then you're probably going to go against the Onyx Watch again to take out this. Yeah, everything is going as planned. We definitely need some more um, mid, some more mid-game ships, though, now that we're fighting against the Onyx Watch. Oof, what are they doing there? There's a Palisade. And a spear. Yeah, we're going to need some proper anti-armor stuff now. So with that, though, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. Maybe I'll build another new craft in the next video, but this time actually on camera. Not too sure what type of craft, but I am loving having at least one submarine. I kind of want a water skimmer along with a load of other things, so suggestions are very welcome. I didn't have much time for this video, same with the last one, because of all the things going on in real life at the moment, as I've talked about countless times on Twitter and over in the community page. It's been a bit difficult for me in the last week or so, but things are starting to look a little bit better now. Hopefully, I'll be able to get more time for From the Depths, for Stellaris, for everything else, because this is exactly what I want to be doing. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Maybe I should just upgrade the envoys. I mean, that would not be difficult. Thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and until next time, goodbye.